have his way. We'll stay at this time and invite the presence of the Lord in our midst. Precious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. We do thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity that you blessed us once again to be able to assemble together in your house this evening. We pray, God, you bless every effort that's put forth tonight to your glory and your honor, dear Lord. Pray, God, Lord, for those that are sick and their body need to touch tonight, but especially the lost, they'll be saved before it's too late. In Jesus' name, we do ask and pray. Amen. Everybody at will, come on, get in. The Lord has been so good to me, set my captive spirit free. Old things have passed away, all things are new today. He gave me life for past, so give more how I've changed since I found him. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. I'm in a new world, all things have passed away. Behold, all Traveling down the simple road, I had no friend to share my load. I wandered here and there, yet no one seemed to care. But when I knelt that night to pray, I stepped into a brand new day. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. I'm in a new world, all things have passed away. Behold, all things are new ever since that happy day. He opened up my blinded eyes, and then I had a great surprise. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. I can't explain the way I feel. There's not a doubt I know it's real. There's glory in my soul. The hallelujah's roll. No earthly friends may turn me down. I'll still retain this peace I found. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. I'm in a new world. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new ever since that happy day. He opened up my blinded eyes and I had a great surprise. I'm in a new world since the Lord saved me. While we are living in this world of care, many of the burdens that we have to bear, but there's a prayer at the Lord's right hand. Give it a ring and he will understand. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring. Bearing our message unto Jesus, the King of glory. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on for God will your prayer. Three Hebrew children to the flames were thrown. Because the mortal king they would not own. Jesus delivered and the king did song. Prayer bells of heaven beat a man made long. Prayer bells of heaven, oh how sweetly they ring, bearing their message unto Jesus, the King of glory. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on, for God will answer your prayer. When Paul and Silas spoke the throne in jail, they did not worry who would go there. And they began to sing. Her bells of heaven, oh, how sweetly they ring. Bearing our message unto Jesus, the King of glory. When you are 
are burdened down with trouble and care, my brother, bring on and all for God will answer your every prayer. Into the garden Jesus went to pray, until his sweat became as blood, they say. Sweetly they ring, keep ringing, bearing a message unto Jesus, the King of glory. When you are burdened down with trouble and care, ring on and on, for God will answer your prayer. shining way I'm in the glory land way telling the world that Jesus saves today yes I'm in the glory land glory land way I'm in the glory land glory land way I'm in the glory land glory Get up, get up, get up. 
get out of the pews and take a hold of the power that's trying to be her news. Get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily those who would be saved. Don't go down defeated while big pressures to claim. Get up. The darkness of the night, feeling all alone, a restless night of trouble seems to be so long. Each minute that is passing seems an air away, and then I feel his loving arms. And I hear him gently say, it's not very long till dawn will be breaking. God's son will come and chase the night away. All things will be changed when his son comes through the clouds. So just look tonight. For the dawning of the day Oft times I get discouraged Thinking Satan is so strong But that's when I need reminded That God's still on the throne And he'll send his son to bring me Home with him someday For that I can be happy Though dark may be the way, it's not very long Till dawn will be breaking God's sun will come and chase the night away All things will be changed when his sun comes through the clouds So just look tonight for the dawning of the day all things will be changed when his sun comes through the clouds. So just look tonight for the dawning of the day. God is so good. God is so good. God.
for me. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. God They sing in heaven. 
Let the world proclaim, bless your name. What a lovely name. Satan whispers to my troubled mind, just lay your armor down. There are those you've loved and trusted. Look around you, they're all gone. Would be easy to surrender when you're standing all alone. Then I bow my head in sadness as I ponder what to do. I've been in God's army for so long and I've been a soldier true. Then I hear a voice from heaven saying, Pilgrim, it is I. Lift your head and take new courage and turn your eyes toward the sky. Then I see a great band of angels camped all around me. And I hear the captain rising up the challenge to me. And I know I'm safe from harm when I'm trusting Jesus. Oh, yeah, the battle is his. The victory is mine. And victory is sweet. Oh, I see a great band of angels camped all around me. And I hear the captain rising up to challenge to me. And I know I'm safe from harm when I'm trusting Jesus. Oh yeah, the battle is his, the victory is mine, and victory is sweet. Yeah, the battle is his, the victory is mine, and victory is sweet. I was reading some scripture last night. Hang on, son. Sorry. sorry, Trish. I got thinking about the scripture I read last night and lost track of mine. But uh, in the book of Psalms, 107. Amen. I was just 
basically praying, and the Lord laid this psalm upon my heart. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad God knows what He's doing. Man, I make a mess of things. But I began to, I was just thinking, when I say this, don't please don't think I'm bragging on me. But God began to move the other night, and I love to see people set free. Because I know what it's like to be bound. I know what, it's, I know what it feels like. I know the overwhelming that is such a word. Uh, of to, I mean, if I could just be real with you, there was times I didn't want to see the sun come up. And then once it come up, I didn't want to see it set. And when the Lord sets you free of something, praise God, you're free. And uh, the, the Psalms 107 verse 1 come to my mind. And I just be, I actually read the whole chapter, but I want to read a few verses to you tonight. and We'll just let the Lord have His way. Psalms 107, verse 1, if you want to stand for the reading of God's Word. Listen, it said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Well, we could stop right there and preach on that for hours. Amen. But I want to read a few more if it be the Lord's will. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have you been redeemed? Huh? Who he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They, want, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way, they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distress. And He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. Father, we thank you for the reading of the word tonight, Lord. We just ask that your will would be done here tonight, Lord. Give us the words to say to uplift your people. God, I don't know what they're going through, but Lord, I know you do. God, I, I, don't, I don't know their problems, but Lord, I know you know their problems. I know, God, you know what they face from day to day. Lord, you know how the enemy attacks them. You know how the enemy comes down and torments them. And I just pray, God, tonight that we could say something under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, that the enemy would flee from their life. And let them be set free from whatever it is. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I begin to think about this scripture. And, and if you get time... Tonight or tomorrow or whenever, read, read the, all of Psalms 107 because it is, it is wonderful. It is wonderful. But for the sake of time tonight, those, those nine verses there, I begin to think upon them and begin to, you know, the Lord just begin to stir in my spirit. I was around, me and my two brother-in-laws, we was doing a little fishing last night and, and they was talking to me and I just was sidetracked and he Chris, he kept saying, did you hear me? I said, no, I didn't. I said, I'll be back with you in a minute. He said, are you on the phone? I said, well, not in the physical, but in the spiritual I am. I'll be back with you in a minute. Because when the Lord gets to talking to me and begins to, to, begins to show me things, I don't want no distractions. And by the help of God, I don't care where I'm at. I mean, when the Lord begins to talk, I want to listen. I don't want to miss nothing, amen? You know, when... The, I, there's times I miss my wife's phone call, but I always call her back. But you know, there's sometimes I'll call her back and she'll say, well, I forgot what I wanted to tell you. Huh? And vice versa, there's times she's called me and I mean, times I've called her and she's not answered and then uh, she's called me back and I said, well, I forgot what I was going to tell you. 
I don't want to miss nothing when the Lord begins to speak. Amen. Because I don't know what God's people is going through. Amen. But I can tell you this, God people's, God's people is going through some things. Amen. And if you're not going through nothing tonight, honey, I'd be bumping an altar. Because if you ain't going through nothing, the devil's done got you. But we're going through things. We're facing manifold temptation. And I began to think about these scriptures last night. And I began to think about the children of Israel. And I've said this before, but I want to say it again. God brought them deliverance there to Egypt. Amen. And, and God brought them out of bondage and brought them out of slavery. But yet there come a time, not many days, not soon after, not many hours, not many moments. Amen. They begin to start second guessing. See, they was comfortable where they was at. They didn't want for nothing. Me and my brother-in-law, Jonathan, we was talking the other day and he works at the, at the state prison and he does parolees and, uh, you know, when they, when they serve their time, they, the prison provides them a ride to the bus, uh, sh uh, not shop, stop, bus stop in Bristol. And, and he, he's told me there's been those that get ready to parole out and they do something to get time added on to their sentence. And I said, wonder why you reckon they do that. And I, and I had a thought in my mind why they do that. It's because they ain't got no family. They're, they're scared of what's outside because they become comfortable where they're at. They become comfortable in the place where they was at. They're getting three meals a day. They've got a bed to lay in. It may not be the most comfortable. They're, they've got uh, shower supplies and whatnot. They've got everything that they need. Now they're getting ready to roll out and go back to freedom. And they do something to, hey man, to, to get some time added on so they can stay in a comfortable place, a place of familiarity. And I thought about the children of Israel, how that correlates with it. They was comfortable where they was at. But now here the psalm, the psalmist began to, to write, and he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. You see, they couldn't rejoice because God had set them free because they was too scared of what the next steps was. Hey Amen. And I looked at that young lady the other night and I said, you know the way of God. You know the power of God. You know God can set you free. You know, honey, she's had the Holy Ghost in her life. A beautiful singer, honey. And I, I'm telling you, I encouraged her. Now she has to come to the place, amen, to show that she's uh, a changed being, amen, and, and then come accountable for her actions again. And now we ain't going to have no sin in the pulpit by the help of God. But you see, so many times the enemy wants us to stay where we're at because it's familiar. Amen. I'm tired of familiar things. Amen, somebody. I'm tired of being in the same old routine. It's almost like a, a robot. Come on now. I'm tired of the same old-fashioned things over and over and over. The same old, we, we know how the service is going to go. It's going to be this, this, and this, and then that. And then this is going to happen, then to preach, and then the altar, and then we're going to go home. Honey, what about letting God come in? I, I don't want to be in a form, in a fashion. I want to have something inside of me that other people want. Hey, man, I want to draw your attention to something tonight, and I want to use it for an illustration. Have you noticed there's a few different bulbs in the lights? transition is taking place to the LEDs well the bulb looks the same on the outside but on the inside it's different huh it's the same you can take a you can take that LED bulb out and you can take the take the power source away from it and take the one of these uh, uh, I guess you call it incandescent or halogen whatever you want to call it bulbs you can take the power source away from it and you hold them up and they look the same they've got the same form They've got the same uh, thread pattern to go into the socket there on the light fixture. Amen. But there's something on the inside that's different about it. Amen. You see them LED bulbs, they're brighter. They give off a, a brighter light. Huh? And they're cost efficient. No, I'm not trying to put a commercial in here by no means. But I'm, I'm trying to make a point here tonight. Amen. If we ain't careful, we're going through the same old thing over and over and over. And when we first give our heart to the Lord, we was as bright as the LED. Come on, neighbor. 
But I'm afraid through some time. Have you ever seen an old bulb? It'll start getting black on the inside and you know that thing's getting ready to blow. Amen. You know that thing's getting ready to go because there's something taking place on the inside of there. That filament has been burning and it's getting ready to lose contact. Amen. And that, that blowed light bulb ain't good for nothing. Come on, neighbor. But you see, when we come to the place in God where we can shine bright even in our darkest moment, Amen, somebody. I meant to bring, I was using a headlamp last night to fish with. You know, it's hard to tie a, a hook back on a line when you break one off if you ain't got no light. And there wasn't no light around, but, and the only light, well, there was other lights around, but it was still, it was dark in front of me is what I'm getting at. I don't want to stand here and lie to you. There was lights around, but I still couldn't see what was going on right in front of me. And I wanted to bring that headlamp tonight and cut all the lights off. And I wanted to show you tonight, amen, how we are to be the light in the world. How God has brought us out of a dark place. How God has set our feet and established us. Amen, how we're supposed to be praising and worshiping Him. You see tonight, church, if we've been born again, we've all got a testimony. Amen. You might not have been a dope addict. You might not have been a drunkard. You might not have been a harlot. Amen, somebody. You may not have been this or that, but I can tell you something tonight. We've all got a testimony. I once was lost. Come on, somebody. But now I'm found. Hello, neighbor. Huh? You see, there's a, there's, there's a few that amazing, the song Amazing Grace, it don't move them. Amen. But you see, that, that song moves me because I know how the grace of God has been introduced to my life. And I know how that things have changed in my life. And yeah, I may look the same. And I may, amen, have the same physical name. And I may have the same DNA. But can I tell you something? There's been a change taking place on the inside. Amen. As you see here as we read into the scripture, amen, the psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Huh? Is it time that the church would come back alive? Come on, neighbor. Everybody else is coming out and doing what they want to do and everybody else is bragging on what they want to brag on. Why cannot the church stand up for what is right? Amen? Are you afraid you're going to get some punishment? Are you afraid you're going to get some ridicule? Amen? Let me tell you something tonight, church. Paul and all these other apostles, Peter's and James, Peter and James and John, they did not care what, the, what man could do to the flesh. They still had a job to do. Amen? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Have you been redeemed tonight? Amen, somebody. I, I don't think, to, and, and I might be dead wrong, but I don't think nobody sitting in this room here has been bound by drugs. Huh? But you know what? We've still been redeemed. Come on, neighbor. Huh? Now, I wasn't a chronic drunk. I didn't have to have alcohol to function, but now I did like to drink. The devil had me deceived that that was the only enjoyment that I was going to... The only, the only time I could have a good time was when I was with my drinking buddies. Huh? The only time that... Amen, that the devil had me convinced the only time that there was ever any enjoyment in my life is when we was acting like a fool. That just there ain't no other way to put it. Huh? And then the next morning you felt like you've been run over by a locomotive. Huh? And you say, I ain't going to never do that again. Huh? And then next thing you know, hey, come on, we're going to do this. We're going to sit around the camp fire. We're going to go here, do this, do that. And hey, man, what do you do? There you went. You was right back with them. But you know what? I've been redeemed from that. I'm no longer that man. Hey, Amen. I don't desire it. Hey, Amen. I, I don't, I don't. Listen, there's those tonight, and I don't know why I'm saying all this tonight, but hey, Amen. God knows. God can set you free of whatever it is tonight. I relate to alcohol because that's what had me bound. Hey, Amen, neighbor. That's what had me bound. You see, there, there's different things that can bind you tonight. The enemy has many different tactics. Hey, Amen. But I know the one that can set all men free. And whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. Amen. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Amen, somebody. Can you, can you praise Him tonight for where He's brought you from? You're not what you used to be. Amen. People want to feel ashamed. Well, I used to be this. Honey, use it. Use it for the glory of God. Testify about it. 
Ah, oh, preacher, I'm ashamed of my past. I'm ashamed of how I act. Listen, honey. There is now therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Can we not take what the Word of God says? Amen. There's been those, amen, listen, I told you uh, sometime back last year was probably one of the hardest years. The last, I don't know, late summer, fall into winter was really hard in a mental state. Fighting the pits of hell. You'd take one thought captive and here come another. Huh? You'd take that thought captive and boom. I just felt like I was getting punched from every side. I felt like I was surrounded. And they was just punching me from every which way they could. Amen? But you know what? And, and there's time to time. Now, don't get me wrong. There's time to time. The devil, he'll try to bring something back up. I said something to my wife the other day. And she said, now, we've done cross this bridge, ain't we? Huh? Ain't we done cross this bridge? I said, yeah, but. She said, no, there ain't no but to it. Come on, somebody. You see, sometimes we got to be reminded of where God has brought us from. And through our testimonies, it helps others. Come on, neighbor. I don't know what you've been through. I could probably tell you what my wife's been through more than any of you in here. Even though I've got an aunt and an uncle back there. I could still, I don't know everything that they've been through. I don't know everything that you've been through. I know some things. Amen. I know some things through the death of loved ones and whatnot, sickness, different diseases. Amen. My heart broke last, last year when they said Jimmy had that virus. I'm, I'm going to tell you, fear tried to grip my heart. Fear tried to tell me that uh, he was out of here. Huh? And you know what? I had to tell that devil, get thee behind me, Satan. I know the one that can heal this. Amen, somebody. But you see through that testimony, when, when Jimmy's preaching or when he talks about it, amen, and he, he tells us how sick that he was, and how that the, uh, one time, uh, maybe more than once, but I remember him saying, he told Ada, call the kids and let me tell them goodbye. I'm leaving here. Ah, but look what God done. Look sitting behind me here. Huh? You see, I, I believe the devil was trying to upset the atmosphere of what was getting ready to happen at the church. Nothing catches God by surprise. Huh? Nothing catches God by surprise. I remember back in early 2017, I remember the Lord used me to prophesy to Big Jim. I said, there's a dark time just ahead of you. But if you'll cling to me, I'll see you through it. And when I turned to, to, to leave him and walk back to my seat, my mind automatically went to his wife. I thought Zuane was leaving here. Little did I know it was concerning my papa. Huh? Because I heard Big Jim stand behind this podium right here and say, this man has been like a brother to me. And my heart is broke. Huh? So many times when God tells us something, we want to we wanna put our two cents on it. Come on, neighbor. Huh? We can't take God for what He really, what He really means because we're we we done twisted it. I'm telling you, no sooner Jim sat right there, no sooner I got around the piano and was coming down off the stage, honey, those thoughts was in my mind. God help the family. Lord, please let it be peaceful. That was 2017. She didn't pass till last year. Come on, somebody. You see, we we automatically begin to think, but you see, God knew what He was doing. Amen. And I tell you that tonight, not to look down on me or not to boast and to brag on me. I'm nothing tonight. Amen. But I'm here to tell you tonight, we need to know when God is speaking to us and what He means when He's speaking to us. Amen. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Huh? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. The hand of the enemy. Come on, somebody. You're either going to serve one or the other. There's only two you can serve. And it's God or it's the devil. Amen. I've said this before here recently, and I want to say it again. I heard it at a funeral the other day. We're eternal beings. You're going to be eternally with the devil 
or you're going to be eternally with God. Come on, neighbor. Huh? God has spared me from the hand of the enemy. Had it not been for the mercy of God, I would have been consumed. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about I would have been consumed by worldly desires, worldly lust. It's untellable where I would have been. If I Listen, church, I want to tell you something. Can I be real with you tonight? Can I be honest with you? It's all I can do to make it with God. Come on. If you'll be honest tonight, you can say the same thing. It's all I can do to make it with God. I couldn't imagine over these last few years trying to make it without God. Amen, somebody. You see, I've had family members commit suicide and this, that, and the other. And people's told me that all that runs in the family. Hey Amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. My mother, she even tried to overdose years and years ago. When was it? 2008, I believe it was. That's the year Brooke started running after me like Cupid. She was there, and I thank God she was there. Hey Amen. That was 2008. People says that runs in the family. You know you're going to be like that. Uh-uh. Honey, I know what happened when Mamaw passed away. I wasn't serving God, but I heard the voice of the Lord. Amen. You come too late to tell me it wasn't God that night. Huh? The voice, that, 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 dark, that dark image, whatever you want to call it, that dark being that was in my room. Hey Amen. I told you and I've told you that I was staring down the barrel of a gun night after night. I was mad at God because Mamaw passed away. woman that did not deserve the sickness that she endured she would have given you every dollar that she had and I was so mad at God for taking her and the devil began to put thoughts in my mind and I wasn't serving God I didn't understand it I've been, been brought up in church don't get me wrong and I knew I mean I knew there's the power of God but honey I was a hypocrite I was, I was a generation of vipers. Amen. I was one of the biggest hypocrites around. But I remember that night the devil said, you ain't going to do it. And he said, I'll do it to you. He said, I'll take your life. And I want you to know something. The devil can't take your life. But honey, he can try his best. Amen. You believe that tonight, neighbor? And I never will forget, honey, there was something pushing me down in that bed. It was pushing down upon my chest, and every time I would, I would exhale. Hey, it, I've never, years and years ago, I had a little old black snake around my hand, and that thing kept tightening up. And that's what it felt like every time I would exhale. And through watching documentaries and different things about uh, nature on TV, every time when a snake has something in its clutches, and every time that thing exhales, that snake tightens up a little bit. And every time I would breathe out, I could feel that I couldn't, I couldn't get nothing back in. Buddy, the enemy had me tormented and the fear was gripping my mind and I wasn't serving God. Hey man, I was trying, I tried my best. Dad was there at the house and Mom was too. And I tried to say Dad and I couldn't. And I tried to say Mom and I couldn't. I was thinking and I was thinking and I was thinking and I could not say what it was. What I, what I was wanting to say, it was not coming out, it was just in my mind. Hey Amen. And I knew who to turn to, even though I wasn't serving God. Honey, I just simply, in my mind, I didn't verbally say it, but in my mind, I was thinking about that name Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. It would just come across my mind. And I could, I could feel me go, I could feel me getting a little more in. I could feel it getting deeper. Before you know it, honey, I felt that thing coming up off of me. I'm telling you, if God is my witness, honey, my room was pitch black. And all of a sudden, there was a light shone in my room. And I don't know if you believe in seeing angels or not, but I seen them. Amen. Amen. And I've seen four of the glorious angels that you've ever seen come. Honey, and that evil spirit had to depart out of that room. I know what it's like to be bound. No, I didn't give my heart to the Lord then. I waited. I waited. Amen. But can I tell you something, neighbor? There come a time in my life. I was under conviction then. I ain't going to lie to you. I was mad at God and under conviction all at the same time. Does that make sense? But I waited and I waited and I waited three years later before I gave my heart to the Lord. 
But I'm reminded of that night. And amen, that's why I can say, praise God, for His mercy endureth forever. He has redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. Amen. And if I've ever heard the voice of God, I heard it that night. He said, there's a work that He's got to do. Satan, you have to let go. And I've seen that, old, that evil spirit, whatever you want to call it, I seen it walk out of my room. And honey, I'm telling you what, I heard it walk through the kitchen. And I want you to know as God is my witness. I'm not here trying to tell you no fairy tale. I heard the back door open and I heard it shut. Huh? And then I heard the voice of the Lord again tell me this. I have delivered you from the spirit of suicide. And it will never torment you again. Come on, somebody. Huh? I know what it's like to be bound, neighbor. Huh? I know what it's like. Now, don't get me wrong. The devil comes from time to time and says, Well, now you'll be better off dead. dead. And I say, Get thee on out of here. I know what God done for me. What God does, He does well. Come on, somebody. What God does, He does well. He ain't, did Paul halfway get his uh, uh, sight back? Come on. Huh? I heard a preacher preach that one time. Paul's thorn in the flesh was his eyesight where he was stricken blind. Don't give me that garbage. I ain't going to listen to it. Amen? When God sent Ananias down to a street called Straight Honey, his sight was restored back to better than what it was. Come on, neighbor. Why? Because he was able to see the things of God then. Come on, somebody. Huh? God don't halfway do nothing. And the voice of the Lord told me that night, He said, you will not be tormented by the spirit of suicide anymore. Come on, neighbor. And I've not been. Amen. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lamb of God. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Honey, I have been redeemed. I know where God brought me from. I know the spirit that had a hold on me. No, I wasn't serving God, honey. But I'm telling you, I did hear the voice of God. And I know what set me free. And there ain't nobody going to tell me no difference. Because you wasn't there and I was. Come on. I know God can set you free from whatever spirit that torments you. Whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, whether it be suicide, pornography. Come on, neighbor. A homosexual spirit, whether it be a spirit of lesbianism or a spirit of gay, God can set you free. Amen. God can clean you up. God can, amen, establish your goings and put your foot upon the rock. I, I don't know about you. Amen. If you're wanting to shout, you're missing your chance tonight. Amen, because God can do these things tonight. And, and amen, it's time that the church would stand up. Amen, listen, we've got people coming in that's hurt, that's been bound, and they need to know what God has done for us. Huh? Most every time that we close out service, I can't hardly think of a time that we haven't, but we give people a chance to testify. Come on, somebody. People says, well, I ain't had an opportunity to give my testimony. Ain't nobody stopping you. Jimmy, be sure that you give them a chance to testify when we close here tonight. Don't you dare leave here saying you didn't get a chance to tell your story. Huh? Well, I've told it before, and it just seems like everybody folds their arms in the house. Honey, bless God, tell it for the glory of God. I don't care. Listen, I seen something the other day. I seen a picture. It said, preach the gospel, whether it clears out the room or fills the room up. Can I say it this way? Tell your testimony whether they empty the house or fill the house. God needs to know. I mean, the world needs to know what God can do for you. Come on, somebody. Amen. God, Listen, God has got all power in heaven and in earth. And we've come to the place where the church has become relaxed and, and sit back and be quiet. But listen, the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've been redeemed. Come on, somebody. I've been redeemed. There was a time in my life, honey, I had a spirit of rebellion. Amen. I did. I thought I knew everything. Come on. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I give this man behind me a hard way to go because he was my boss at the time. That man wouldn't let me quit my job. I'd storm off mad and quit. 
He'd call me that evening. You boy, you better be back to work here in the morning. Huh? What'd I do? I'd swallow my pride and I'd go right back to work. Rode with him to work for the longest time, didn't I? Amen. But you see, a spirit of rebellion was on me. Amen. And I thought I knew more. But you see, God began to show me some things, honey. God began to, amen, set me down and begin to teach me some things. Pride goes before destruction and destruction before the fall. Huh? A man who can't control his angers is like a city without walls. What's that mean tonight, neighbor? If you're a city without walls, honey, just anything can come in and overtake you. You can't control your anger tonight. Uh-oh. Come on, somebody. You know why I'm telling you the truth. Huh? I just preached to you the other morning about charity. Come on, neighbor. Can you control your temper? The Bible said to be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and what? Slow to anger. Come on. Hey, man. Now listen. The old me years ago, honey, I'd have burnt your house down. You crossed me the wrong way, I'm telling you I would. I've come a long way. But let me tell you something, he's still working on me. Huh? He's still working on me. You sit there and act all holy if you want to tonight, honey. You let the devil find you somewhere in the flesh. Come on, neighbor. Huh? Jesus found God manifest in the flesh. I mean, the devil found God manifest in the flesh after Jesus had fasted 40 days and nights. And he came and tempted him. When? When? When he was in the flesh. Was he in the spirit? No, honey, he was in the flesh. You let the devil find you in the flesh and see if you ain't got a short temper. Come on, somebody. Hey, man. Honey, there's been times I've been in my flesh. Come on now. Something will happen. I'm a, not, not, uh, help me, Lord. Come on. Hey, man, I don't take no cuss fit or nothing like that. Hey, man. I ain't, I ain't slinging punches or nothing like that. Hey, man, but boy, I can't sure pop off a smart mouth. I'm surprised I didn't get an amen from right there. <laughs> you let the devil find you in the flesh sometime, honey. You see how holy you really are. Come on, neighbor. Yeah, all right, that's foolish tonight. You come on over here to the real world where we're at. 2021, honey, where we're facing manifold devils. Manifold temptation. Where we're facing, hey amen, uh, spirits like we ain't never faced before. Come on, somebody. Huh? Listen, it's a shame. It's a shame they'll come in church and shout the house down and then they go out and live like the world the rest of the week. Come on. They ain't got a fear of God about them no more. Come on, somebody. Huh? They'll go down to Friday night karaoke. Hey, man, and sing them old ungodly songs and come in here on Sunday. Hey, man, and think they're going to get a move of God going. No. Hey, man. You see, when you serve God, you're either going to serve Him all the time or none of the time. Come on, neighbor. Huh? I remember I worked, when I worked on the strip job, as a boy kept missing work. He come in late one morning. He was driving a hauler, a big, big rock truck. That truck sat there. Boss had been on the CB. Anybody seen so-and-so? Anybody? Uh-uh. Well, all of a sudden, here come that truck through the parking lot, and I didn't think nothing of it. All of a sudden, the boss, Jeremy, he said, Who's in that rock truck? That boy spoke up. Uh, it's me, I overslept. Huh? You know what the boss's next word was? You need to decide if you're going to stay home and sleep or if you're going to show up and work. Because this is your last chance, and if you're late again, you're fired. This wasn't the first time. This wasn't his first chance. Huh? What was he doing, honey? He was laying out all night long doing the things he wanted to and then come dragging into work. And he wouldn't get he, the mercy of God that he didn't push me off a high wall one day. Huh? I was sitting in a dozer, honey, in that big old rock truck backed right into me. Hey, man, I was sitting there reading my Bible. I ain't going to lie to you. I didn't have nothing to do. I asked the boss, I said, what do you need me to do? He said, just stay out of sight and out of mind. He said, keep the road fixed, this, that, and the other. I got the road done. I cracked my Bible open. I was sitting there reading it. Next thing I know, bow. I looked around. There's a rock truck back into me. Huh? Blowed out of his mind. Hey man, listen, you do what you want to on your time, but when you're involved in endangering my life, hey man, I don't care one bit. I told the boss, I said, you need to come up here. And I showed him what happened. And I said, I'll go, I'll volunteer. Random drug screen, I'll go with you. I don't care. I said, this endangers my life. 
Come on, somebody. People want to live like the world all week long and then come in here. Listen, I'm not being mean. I've, I've said it before with the house full on Sunday morning, just as well as I will on a Saturday, uh, Saturday night or Wednesday night. There's more to it than just Sunday morning church. Come on, somebody. It sure is. There's like so many got a form and a fashion. I understand health issues. I understand health problems, driving capabilities. Amen. People up in years. I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Amen. But I'm talking about sorriness. No good excuse. Amen. Then we come in and we want to say, oh, I'm redeemed. Are you? Are you now? I've been redeemed. Honey, I know where God's brought me from. Amen, somebody. I was glad, like David said, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I was exceedingly glad to be able to come to church tonight. How about you, neighbor? Amen, somebody. Huh? I hadn't seen my wife all day, and I was in there getting ready. She was just standing in the bathroom. I said, i got to get ready. Let me brush my teeth, and then I'll give you a kiss. I said, we got to go to church. Huh? I was excited to see her, but I was more excited about church. Come on, somebody. Is that all right tonight? Have you truly been redeemed? Have, has God brought you from the hand of the enemy? Has God set you free from something tonight? Oh, preacher, I ain't never been bound by nothing. Honey, you was bound by sin. Hey, man, you wasn't born good. You was born of a sinful man. A sinful woman. You had to, hey man, a sinful nature. You had to choose to do good. Hey man, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've heard people stand up and say, well, I ain't got a big testimony like so and so, but thank God I've been introduced to the grace of God. What more of a testimony than you want, than do you need than that right there? I've been introduced to the grace of God. Hey man, His mercy has been introduced into my life. Hey man, I've been born again. I'm not, Jimmy said it the other night, I'm not saved. Amen. I'm not saved yet. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Listen, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom hath redeemed, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Have you been redeemed? Huh? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Huh? Come on, somebody. You said, preacher, you I, and I and maybe I did. Maybe I just preached this too long, not too long ago. But I want to tell you something. These verses right here mean so much to me. I believe it's four times in here. Listen, verse number six. Four times. It, it, it's mentioned four different times, I do believe. Verse six. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them. Huh? Did he? He delivered them. Come on, neighbor. He delivered them out of their distress. Come on. Listen, I said that in verse 6, verse 13, verse 19, and verse 28. It all says the same thing. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He brightened them, and He bringeth them out of their distress. Huh? Come on, somebody. He delivered them. He bringeth them. It says the same thing. means the same thing. All you've got to do is cry unto the Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. People say, I can't sing. I can't this and I can't that. Amen. Don't do it for the audience of man. Do it for God. Huh? Do it for God. Amen. You tell me. Let me tell you something tonight. Listen. I like, I like at, at home. I'll uh, pull up YouTube and I'll put on the Hoppers or the McCainies or the Isaacs or somebody like that. Listen to that good gospel music. And honey, they're good. Don't get me wrong. Airline is another good group. Ernie just passed away last year. Kidney failure. He sings that song. I, uh, I think he wrote that song. I sung, I sing. My home is just around the bend. Them boys are good. Them groups is good. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather have somebody that means it. And I'm not saying that they don't. Hear me out. I'm, I'd rather have somebody that's got a pure heart tonight singing to glorify God. Amen. And let the Holy Ghost presence fall in the house than to hit every note. I don't know if you know this or not, 
I mess up all the time over there. I ain't no professional. Huh? I mess up. I get out of beat. Come on, neighbor. I mess up. When I sing, sometimes I squeak and scratch and everything else. I might tell them G and then take off singing an E or something like that. Huh? But you see, I'm not doing it for your applause. I'm doing it for the glory of God. Pureness tonight is what God's after. Pure heart. Purity. Give me clean hands and a pure heart, oh God. Amen. You show me a church that's been struggling, and I'll show you a church with the move of God. Amen. And I'm not saying this to brag on us, but we've been having some good services, ain't we? Huh? We've been having some good meetings. And to God be the glory. It ain't nothing I've done. It ain't nothing Jimmy's done. It's us as a group coming to the place where it don't matter who does what. We just come to worship God. Come to see people set free. How many's got people bound by something? Drugs, alcohol, pornography, perversion. Come on. Huh? Don't you want to see them set free? Come on, neighbor. Come on. I told them, I forget what church I was at. I, I told them, I was in the revival of Coburn last week. I said, we need to have enough of God in the service, enough conviction power of God, that when they drive by, they feel something. Come on, somebody. Huh? Uh, mommy, I look over at Daddy. Turn that off. We're going by the church. Well, what's that matter? Turn that rock and roll off. Huh? That much power of God. Come on, neighbor. Huh? Honey, there used to be a time people feared the church grounds. Come on, right now, that's their safe place to do their dope dealing. Come on, neighbor. Huh? People will go parking. If you don't know what that is, see me at a church except the children. You can ask your mama. Huh? Come on. You know what I'm talking about. They ain't got to fear God anymore. Come on. We're living in that time. Honey, it's time we wake up out of a sleep. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Huh? A testimony. Now, this is just what if I was bound by uh, drugs and God set me free. Amen, somebody. God totally delivered me. Amen. Didn't have no withdrawals. God moved on me the other night. Now, please, I'm not bragging on me. But God moved on me the other night. That sister, that handkerchief I used to preach with, it was soaking wet and probably stunk. But God told me to pour oil on it and to pray over it. And that's what we did. That sister sent me a picture the other day. And she had that rag up here on her. She said, you don't know how much peace this has brought me. Come on. You don't know the peace. Honey, it ain't what I did. It's what God's doing. Come on, neighbor. It's what God's doing. If he can set one free, he can set 10,000. Jimmy said it the other night. One can put 1,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000. Three can put 100,000. Just imagine. We're few in number. Just imagine what we could put to flight tonight. Amen. As they get us a song, I've tried my best. It ain't been one of them big shouting messages, amen, but it's been good, has it not? Not because I preach, but because it's the Word of God. Huh? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It's time for the church to start acting like it's been redeemed again. There's too many of the churches nowadays that's got too much of the world going on. Come on. Let's be a church on fire for God. Let's be a church being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, somebody. We're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and what? The word of our testimony. Let that redeem. Let the redeemed say so, honey. Let that testimony come forth. You're made an overcomer. Every time you test, people's bound. Before she sings, people's bound by this right here. They're afraid to testify and to brag on God because they know the devil will ride them all week long. Come on, neighbor. Well, God touched my back the other night. I was afraid to say anything. Honey, God ain't giving me a spirit of fear. But the power of love and a sound mind. God touched me the other night. My stomach was all messed up. And praise be to God. I'm not bragging on Sister Jenny. But honey, she come and prayed for me. And my stomach's been better. It was upset today. And I said, no devil. Uh-uh. He said, you're not going to be able to make it to church tonight. You need to call and let Trish know. I didn't know that Jimmy would be here. He said, I said, no devil. By the help of God, I'll go. I'll go. I was excited. I was excited to get to come to God's house. How about you, neighbor? Was you excited? 
Amen. I was excited to get to come to be in, in, in church with my church family. Listen, I mean this. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I love each and every one of you. Just like my own blood family. You hear me? I mean that church. Jimmy said it the other night. I wouldn't care one bit to call on any of y'all to get a prayer through for me because I know you could. I look around and I see nothing but pray, praying prayer warriors sitting in the audience tonight. Amen. It means something to have a family of God like that. It means something to have a family that we can call on in the time of trouble and distress. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've been redeemed. This altar's open if you need to pray as she sings tonight. Come find your place to pray. If you can't come forth, find a place where you're at right there. We love you. God bless. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end oh where could i go but to the lord neighbors are kind i love them everyone we get along in sweet accord but when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul when I'm needing a friend to save me in the end where could I go but to the Lord life here is grand with friends I love so dear comfort I get from God's own word yet when I face the chilling hand of death where could I go but to the Lord where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. When I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? 
seeking a refuge for my soul. When I'm needing a friend to save me in the end, oh, where could I go but to the Lord? No better place to turn than to the Lord, is there? No matter how great your problem may seem, God is greater. He is able to deliver us and set us free from the snares of the enemy. Amen. Satan tonight, he attempts to lay snares to try to entrap people and but the Lord can loose those that want to be loosed, set them free no matter how deep in sin they may have gone. If they desire to be delivered, the Lord will reach down with a saving hand and he will pick them up from the lowest depths of sin, set their feet on, solid, on a solid rock, a solid foundation. Amen. Sin is like quicksand. Amen. If you've ever, amen, uh, seen uh, those uh, quagmires out in uh, places where they, uh, I guess uh, nature shows and things, and animals will come thinking that there might be some water there or whatever, and they get in it, and it just pulls them on in. And the more they fight, the deeper they a matter of drawn into that. And when sin gets a hold of a person, the only thing that will free them is the blood of Jesus. Thank God there's power in his blood. Jonathan done a wonderful job. I want to say tonight we appreciate your presence in the house of the Lord. Pray one for another. We all need prayer. The old devil tonight, and he tries... Even though he can't get us as long as we stay under the covering of the blood, but he'll sure try every way he can to try to hinder you. But you have to press on into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Even in hard times. When you don't feel a move of God, you've got to still press in. Amen. Make an effort. Because the Lord's still standing right there with his arms outstretched. Amen. We thank God tonight we do not walk alone. He is with us. Amen. He said he'd go all the way with us, didn't he? Even to the end of the world. All right. Remember the services over the coming weekend. Pray for him. Thank God he has to go to the doctor tomorrow. Pray everything will turn out good for him. Rye. Yeah. Just remember Rye has that arthritis bad bad enough when you're older and have it but as a child it just but there's a lot in these prayer right a lot of a lot of people in need tonight all right let's stand thank the lord for this service Heavenly father we shall meet